The right to host the 2018 and 2022 World Cup soccer finals was decided in a secret ballot by soccer's governing body FIFA in December last year. And there were more than a few eyebrows raised when Qatar won the right to host the tournament in 2022. In Australia, there was shock at how poorly this country's bid had fared, garnering just one vote in the first round. And concerns have been raised about how the $45 million of taxpayers' money was spent. And Australia is not the only country now casting a sceptical eye over the process. A British parliamentary committee has been examining England's bid and has heard that executive members of FIFA solicited favours or money in return for their support. One journalist at the centre of that story is Andrew Jennings. He runs a website called transparencyinsport.org. He's preparing a report to air tonight on the BBC's Panorama programme and he joins us now from London. Andrew Jennings, welcome to Late Line. Hello, Ali. One third of FIFA executive committee members have now either been found guilty or been accused of impropriety. After your latest research, and in your view, how corrupt is FIFA? I think FIFA is institutionally corrupt. It should be closed down following a conference of intergovernmental sports ministers, very similar to the, the meetings which changed the International Olympic Committee in 1999. We shouldn't be taking any more nonsense from Herr Blatter. He runs a corrupt organisation. This is the fourth major documentary I've made for British television, and still I hear people out there saying, well, you know, he said he'll get rid of the devils and he'll reform it. Uh, was Mr Capone going to close down the Mafia in Chicago? Can we get real about this? Well, do you have hard, incontrovertible proof? Because, of course, it raises the question, if you've reported this before, if there is hard proof, why has nothing been done? Of course I have hard proof. I'm an investigative reporter. You don't send me to the sports match, I might get the scoreline wrong. I go for documents. In the last BBC panorama I did in November, just before that vote, I revealed a document showing 100 million US dollars worth of bribes to FIFA officials. Some of them they did through uh, Liechtenstein brass plate companies, some were by names. We made the point, as we've been making on BBC television since 2006, that Blatter actually handled one of the bribes. He doesn't sue us, he doesn't talk about it, it's in my book about FIFA. Unfortunately, you see you have a, a cut-off between sports reporters who don't do investigations. They listen to spin doctors like Peter Hargitay, who we'll come to in a bit, uh, they don't go and get the documents. We've got them. We're not sued. It's there. And, and slowly the temperature is going up. At last it's going up in England over the way these people have made fools of us uh, and fools of you as well. Well, th there are two executive committee members who have already been suspended. As I said earlier, there's another six who are being investigated. Does the evidence that you have go past that eight? We've been naming them. I mean, if you, if you can get access to the BBC programme, go on my website and you'll see, the la in two parts, the last programme I made, FIFA's Dirty Secret, where we named Nicholas Laos from uh, Paraguay for getting 730,000 US dollars. Uh, he's the one now accused of asking for a knighthood from the Brits, which he, I'm quite sure he did. Jack Warner, so corrupt you don't know where to start. A racist kleptomania, and that's legally safe, by the way. Um, he's the one who you'll see on television, he's always spitting at me or hitting me. That's a nice advertisement for football. We've got another documented story on Warner. We've got the documents of him trading in tickets in 2006, and we did some of them l last year in 2010. But FIFA is never going to investigate. H how can Blatter or Mohammed bin Haman, the challenger, investigate Jack Warner, who runs the Caribbean region and 35 votes with more discipline than Pyongyang in North Korea? It stinks. Well, it's disgusting. It, indeed, it raises the question of what does happen next and what needs to happen, because as you just uh, indicated, the FIFA presidential election is being held on the 1st of June. Uh, Set Blatter is up against the Qatari, Mohammed bin Haman. Is it likely that Blatter will get back in? And if so, it seems fairly clear you have no uh, faith that he will be able to do the job of investigation and restoration. He has no interest in doing it. He's no interest in doing it at all. Why should he? These are the people who keep him in power. Sadly, Mohammed bin Haman, who I know quite well and I can chat to, is quite clear when I talk to him, and I talk to him in tonight's film, he doesn't accept there's any corruption at FIFA. I mean, we have the documents. He doesn't accept it, so there's going to be no change. So what is to be done? Well, we have started to move very slowly, very late, 
very late in the day. But at least in the English, in the British Parliament, things are now happening, and we have now, we are now as a public putting pressure on the the dimwits at the English Football Association, they've now agreed that they're going to abstain in this election. Now, what the next thing they should do is call for sports minister shall speak unto sports minister. They're furious in America. You guys are furious. You got totally ripped off and deluded in Australia. Uh, the Dutch are also angry. You start having an, in an interdepartmental, intergovernmental conference, and FIFA will collapse because the sponsors will say, uh-uh, as they said to the International Olympic Committee, and clean-up time will come. So what you have to do is, Mr. Abib, your sports minister, should be on the phone tomorrow to the British sports minister, Robertson. I don't know who does the job in Washington, but there'll be somebody, uh, or somebody in the Senate. You start ringing around and say, we've had enough of these bums. And that way, the sponsors will instantly withdraw support. They've already started talking about it. Uh, Sony Europe spokesman said last year, just before our last round of disclosures, he said to a conference, uh, let's make clear, w w we're not sponsors of FIFA, we're sponsors of the Football World Cup. So the crack is going in. Will you help us in Australia, please, get rid of these bums? And by the way, why aren't the coppers round? Why aren't your fraud squad round? at FFA headquarters looking at the money that went to Hargitay and the dubious people he brought in to Australia. Well, well let, let me ask you about that, though. There's two, Peter Hargitay and Fedor Radman, who Australia hired to help with their bid. It, it seems unclear how much they were paid, but it uh, looks like it could be in the millions. Tell us about them. It is. It's more. Look, England only got one thing wrong. <laughs> One thing right, I'm sorry, because I do label both countries, uh, sports officials, in this sense as being stupid. England, Lord David Triesman, arrived at the English FA to find the buffoons there had fallen for Hargitay's glib talk. You know, I know, President Blatter, I'm very close. Oh, yes, Peter, will you work for us? Triesman walked to the door and said, what's that bum doing in? Threw him out. He fired him. The buffoons from Australia... Listen to this, unless Murray joined in. It's the uh, the 1956 Hungarian Nexus, I'm afraid, which is, oh well, Peter Hargitay's a wonderful person, very well connected, and we're lucky to get him. Lucky? How much did he cost? You're looking at millions of dollars, because don't just look at the fees that went to him and Fedor Radman. Don't just look at their first-class travel around the world, the way most Australians will never travel. Look also at the dirty... I mean, there's something very dirty at the heart of your bid, and you ought to know about it. But, but if you have hard, hard evidence, if you have hard evidence that those yeah, of two we've got are hard involved... Evidence. And, and again, Ali, the authorities have never moved. We've hard evidence. You, you guys don't listen. Sports officials don't listen. Why do you think we've done four major... Major programs uh, for BBC television, our Blue Ribbon Current Affairs show, and still I hear sports reporters going, well, I think President Blatter wants to reform, and you just think, what are they smoking? What are they smoking? It, it does seem it's extraordinary, looking at the evidence that uh, is on your website and that you have regarding Hargitay and yeah. Radman, how do you explain that, uh, that someone like Frank Lowy, who heads the Football Federation of Australia, also runs a multi-billion dollar business, is clearly no fool what happened? Not appropriate well, due diligence? I, I, look, I, I can only guess with Frank Lowy. I think he's been very busy uh, with Westfield's problems in America fighting off the recession. That's a lot of work for him and his family. Massive amount of work. Uh, he hasn't had the time that might, he maybe should have had to look at the A-League and its problems. And he had a chief executive, Ben Buckley, who was not fit to clean our shoes. He was just a buffoon. And at the heart of it, you have to know the terrible thing that happened. Hargadai turned up glibly selling his dubious wares, right? Ben Buckley fell for it, backed up by, by, by uh, Les Murray talking gibberish at SBS. Uh, why Lowy fell for it, I don't know. I can only think he was too busy. OK, what happened? One of the employees in your Federation office, a woman, spotted what Hargett I was. She'd read the international press. She'd, she read what was happening in Germany, what I'd read, written about him, unchallenged in Britain. Hargett I said to Buckley, fire that woman. Fire that person. Get her out. And big, brave, ballsy Ben Buckley said, Yes, Peter. You know, imagine, six foot four, rules player, tough as they come, should have booted ha uh, Hargatai into the harbour. Fired this five foot, five inch high, smart, 
good, decent Australian employee who's never worked since. You get conned out of lots and lots of money, and now you're still running this crap that somehow Australia nearly got it. America would have got it if certain things, which we'll not say because there's a lot of lawyers watching what's being said at the moment about Qatar. Let's say we were very, 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 very surprised that Qatar got it. Well, I wasn't so, but most people were. America should have got it. Australia never had a hope. And it's, it's not right. your fault. You're not bad people. I'm a friend. <laughs> All right, Andrew Jennings, thank you very much. And I know there's a lot more to come out of this. And uh, if you're right and the sponsors are starting to talk about uh, removing their sponsorship, then maybe there will be some progress. Andrew Jennings, many thanks for talking to Late Line tonight. Thank you.